out of Dan Russian society. We're here to ask Lord Guthrie a few questions about current events and what's going on in the world. Thank you very much for being here today. Nice to see you again. Yes. Um, first question about uh, Islamic State, of course, it's very big in the news. Uh, there are claims that the military leadership of the Islamic State is made of Ba'ath members who were released from prison a few years ago. And these claims can be backed up by quite remarkable military successes that they've had against the Iraqi military. To what extent could this be true? Well, I think it could be true. I mean, I was one of those people who never felt that every Ba'athist was a bad man. I put some of the ablest people and if you were brought up and living in Iraq and you wanted to progress in your career, whether it's a soldier, whether it's a banker, it was sensible to join the Ba'ath Party. Because if you weren't in it, you were viewed with great suspicion. So I'm quite prepared to believe that some of the best people may have been Ba'athists. But on the other hand, the Ba'athists did not really stand for the kind of people who ISIS appear to be, which are who are very religious, fanatically religious. Uh, I'm, I'm surprised, but it may well be true. Thank you. And what methods of soft and hard power should the world community use to contain the Islamic State and bring stability to the region? And should the world community get involved at all? Well, I think that the well community doesn't want to get involved, but undoubtedly, if they destabilize that part of the world the region they live in to a certain extent, I think that people have no choice but to get involved. And uh, that applies equally to the United States and Russians, British, the EU. We don't want to see one part of, a very important part, a very rich part of, of the world in chaos. Okay. And in light of your NATO and military experience, could NATO handle this crisis unilaterally? Well, I think that uh, with difficulty, what we need is countries in the region who really understand the problem probably better than most NATO nations. So I would like to see a much greater involvement in defeating uh, from countries such as Saudi Arabia and Qatar. It is very the closest to the problem. I'm all for us getting involved. I think we may have to put boots on the ground. Certainly the British Prime Minister and the President of the United States don't want to do. But if we are really, we're stayed, we may get to a stage when we have to. But I do think that this ought to be sorted out primarily by the region. Because it's their problem more than ours. And some other specialists have drawn parallels between the Islamic State and other revolutionary movements. So in 1917, we had the Red Movement in Russia, which used terror as its weapon and was very extremist and communist at that point, which was quite anathema to the world. It eventually got rid of the extremists and moderated itself and engaged in craft, in craft, uh, safe crafting. Um, same thing can be said tendentially to the French Revolution, where terror again was used as a tool and eventually safe crafting happened. Is there any chance of this happening in this case? Well, I think it's far too early to, to, to say. I think one of the things which has struck me about the Crescent Crisis is that it suddenly happened. Now, obviously, some people knew about ISIS and talked about it. But to wake up and find out what successes they had had, uh, I found was deeply shocking. Why didn't we have better intelligence? Uh, why we were, were we not better prepared for this? Now they seem to have been stopped momentarily. But 
I think we must have got the capacity to cause a huge amount of problems in the future. And we know what their ambitions are because they say that. They do use terror uh, like other terrorist movements. Uh, seeing people having their heads cut off really horrifies and terrifies people. Uh, so I, I think that you know, this is a force we've got to take very seriously and it needs defeating. Uh, I think we haven't got time to uh, re-educate. It'll take a long time to get this out. These people are fanatics. Indeed. And talking about movements, since this is a Russian society, let me ask about Ukraine, if you don't mind. Currently we're witnessing a pseudo ceasefire during which more people have died than during the actual facilities. And today more messages than what we have heard from about the Ukrainian army regrouping at the front lines. What, what do you see in the future of Ukraine as eastern regions in particular, in the near and short, long term? Well, well, I'm not an expert on this. Um, clearly there are an awful lot of people who are Russians who are living there. They count themselves as Russians, like they were in the Crimea. I think it will be a great problem. And minorities who live in countries are, are a problem. I and mean, what do we do about how do we actually stop from using violence? How do we use them? Do we have a state within a state? Uh, it's very difficult. I think that one thing which has always worried me about Russia is that the concern Russians have about being encircled. They see the Chinese, they see the former Soviet Islamic republics in the south, and they see NATO in the west. And I think they do worry too much about NATO. NATO may huff and puff, but I don't think Russia should be worried about it. And I'm always surprised they have. And Russia is a very proud country, has a very good army. Um, but it does seem that Russian leaders do worry very much about the countries next door to them. I'm surprised they don't live, they can't live with that. Um, but they are, you know, I understand that they're very worried. Okay, and will also Western relations deteriorate further? I hope not, but it could, they could. They certainly could. And the problem of uh, sanctions, um, I hope sanctions won't go on to, for too long. They're hurting Russians, but they're hurting the Europeans too. Um, so I hope things can be calmed down. I think that you know, the Russians. I think they've got to be very careful that um, what I call Russian Ukrainians as opposed to Ukrainian Ukrainians don't do something very stupid. Uh, I don't think Russians, I don't think Russia controls all the people who are Russians in, in Ukraine. And can't help thinking the last thing Russia wants is to be drawn into some really difficult quagmire by, by these people. And what do you think about the current moves made by Russia? Do you see it as a resurgent power? Which, which? The moves made inside Russia and by Russia itself. Um, do I see it? 
you see it as a surging power, so something that should, is well, dangerous. Well, I think that uh, Russia, who I admire in so many ways, is a very proud country. It's a very nationalistic country, and history has brought a lot of this about. And I admire, I admire that. Um, but you know, nowadays the world is globalized, and it's very important for trade and for security for Russia to have allies too. Russia can't do it alone. And uh, I think people in the United Kingdom and in Europe, in, I, mean, I, I say Europe, but I mean, I mean Western Europe, because I view a lot of Russia as a European country. But I think it's very important that we remain talking. We'll have a lot of disagreements in the future, but it is very important that we we understand each other, where we're coming from. And we will have disagreements. We have disagreements perhaps in Africa, we have disagreement on the borders. But for goodness sake, if we keep talking and sensible about it, most problems can be solved. And how do you describe Europe's political economic standing? Some say it's a dimension. Well, I think that um, it is a concern. I'm not sure, I'm not taking sides about Europe and all, not Europe, but I think that it's very difficult to drive Europe forward uh, because we have a lot of differences and the difference in people who come from South Europe and North Europe are huge. You know, the poor south, the poor south of Italy, uh, Greece, which is in the muddle, has very little in common with the United Kingdom or Germany. France is in the muddle at the moment. Uh, but I, 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 you, you can never write Europe off because it has huge resilience and has a great history of going through problems. Actually, not unlike Russia. And is there a cure for Europe's current ailments? Or are we witnessing the end of a unified system? Well, I've always thought it was slightly unrealistic to um, think that Europe could operate like the United States do or other large groups. We're very different. And, well, thank you very much. And on a lighter note, is there anything you'd like to say to Russian students studying inside the United Kingdom? Well, I'm delighted to see you all here. I think it is a great thing that you do send, Russia does send people here. And I hope this will be, it'll have such advantages over the years. Even if you don't like us after your time here, which I hope there's very few people like that. You will understand us and where we're coming from. And that's hugely important. And I've seen it around the world so often. What you know people, you talk people, you have friends. The world, the life becomes easier. Thank you very much. Thank you.